Today we're going to look at three Lima templates that greatly expand the role of a traditional MIDI hardware controller, effectively adding new features and behaviors to your software or hardware. The templates in question are LFO Studio by Mark Strauss and C Cell and Control Lab 2, both by Antonio Blanco. Setup is mostly the same for each of these, so let's go through it with LFO Studio. You should already know the basics of setting up the Lima app. If not, watch some of our other tutorials. Download the templates and then move them to your iPad using iTunes File Transfer. Make sure your iPad and computer are on the same Wi-Fi network. Launch the Lima daemon application and select the inputs and outputs you want to use on the iPad. Open Ableton Live. Launch Lima on your iPad. Select daemon outputs and input 0. Open the LFO Studio template on the iPad. Go to Live's MIDI preferences and enable the same daemon outputs as MIDI inputs. Choose the daemon outputs as MIDI outputs and enable sync out also. This is very important. Close preferences. LFO Studio uses LFOs, low frequency oscillators, which are traditionally audio signals, but here we have MIDI equivalents. You could use these to add more LFOs to your software if it hasn't got enough already, or just to get a more interactive way of working with LFOs. There are eight pages. Each one represents a different LFO and they can all run at the same time. You can use the mute and solo buttons at the bottom of the screen to enable or disable each one. Each LFO can use a different waveform shape and a different loop length. You can also independently alter the range of each using the controls around the display, as well as editing the number of points in each one, or manually drawing in your own custom shape. Back in Ableton Live, this is a simple operator synth preset I've made to use as an example. Now we can put Live into MIDI map mode and use the teach button for each LFO to assign it to a function in the synth. You'll notice that we don't have to switch tabs to access all of the learn controls. The mute silo and teach buttons make it easy to isolate individual LFOs when we're mapping, otherwise they all try and send at the same time. So, here's the finished version. LFO Studio defaults to sending MIDI CC 21 to 28, and I've mapped them like this. A pitch envelope, oscillator B and C levels, transpose, filter frequency, oscillator B and C course tunings, and algorithm. Create a MIDI clip and draw in some notes, so operator has something to play. Start live running and you see the little playhead in the LFO moving as it loops around receiving sync from live. I've just mapped the LFO shapes in sequence and then gone round again when I ran out of shapes. I've set them all to loop over 8 bars so we have a bit of time to hear what they're doing. Now we can bring each LFO online by unmuting it. It starts to get pretty crazy as you add more, but that's cool. And it's all synced to your live project tempo. Another thing we can do is use these plus and minus buttons to add or remove points from the waveform. Also, if we check the config menu, live editing is on, which means I can now double tap, if I can hit the envelope, to add new points, which is useful. We can also use this recall button, so when I start moving the iPad around, I'm just going to pick it up now, it draws in new shapes relating to the orientation of the iPad. This can be set to work on X, Y, or Z orientation. And as soon as it comes to the end of the loop, it exits record and continues to play back. C Cell is another free Lima template that adds further movement to your sound. Setup's pretty much the same as with LFO Studio, although this time we can turn Live Sync off. I'm going to be using Live with the same starter preset as before, so we can hear how C Cell works with the same source sound. 
Conveniently for us, C cell defaults to the same 8 MIDI CCs, 21 to 28, so I can use the same mapped live set as I did with LFO Studio. These CCs can be changed here if you want to, and these buttons enable or disable individual outputs. C cell works by applying an LFO waveform to each MIDI output. Choose a waveform for each output by tapping here. This area is for controller send levels, you can also toggle them on and off here individually and you can apply an overall level using this slider at the bottom. If these are all down, nothing will happen. Next, we can set a rate for each with again an overall slider at the bottom. At the bottom right are the modulation amount controls and the output is displayed above that also with individual toggle switches. You can restart C cell at any time by using the restart button or by sending a MIDI note from a track in live out through the Lima daemon. There are 16 preset slots along the top of the display with copy and paste available between them. So let's hear it now with our example live clip, once again bringing in the controllers one at a time. Control Lab is another Lima template that sends up to eight controllers, but like the others we're looking at here, it has its own personality. Once again, it uses the same default CCs, so we're ready to go straight away. Control Lab uses these multi balls to send its messages. You can touch and drag these around, but it gets more interesting when you use the morph slider to transform between two different sets of positions. The mutate feature automatically moves between multi ball positions with extra controls for timing and depth. You can also exclude individual balls from the action. An incoming MIDI note will also re-trigger mutation. You can also apply this sequencer to the multiple movements, and again, this can be re-triggered at any time with an incoming MIDI note. There's also an ADSR envelope, which you can apply to the multiballs. So here we go, let's start our test MIDI part running and bring up those controllers. These templates are all variations on a theme, but each has its own take on how it will control your software or hardware. They're great with Ableton Live, which I've used here, but you could also use them with Reactor, Reason, whatever you like. I think they can add some really interesting functions to synths in Logic and Mainstage as well, and they can all send MIDI out to hardware if you use a connector like IK Multimedia's iRig MIDI.